Last podcast about severe weather, and in severe weather, the thing that we want to talk about today is tornadoes. Also, severe winds to some degree, but we're going to focus our time on tornadoes. They are fascinating. This is just one of those amazing, cool images. We've got a tornado with a lightning bolt at the same time. They are really one of the most fascinating things in all of weather phenomenon. Hey, uh, let's introduce this with a tornado in Colorado. In May of 2008, uh, one person died. Um, Golf ball size hail. Uh, this is in a place called Windsor, Colorado. Windsor, Colorado is near Fort Collins. So if you look at a map of Colorado, um, the mountain front range starts here, right? We live in Woodland Park about right here. And um, Fort Collins is about right here. And Windsor was just kind of a sur suburb of that. And it's actually very rare for a tornado to occur in, uh, in Colorado, at least in terms of a large damaging tornado. But this is one that happened really not that long ago. I'm recording this in uh, 2010 right now. So uh, let's uh, watch some video footage of this uh, Windsor uh, tornado. You know, and the amazing thing about that tornado is it wasn't really that huge. Uh, we'll learn later about the scale. There's kind of a scale from 1 to 5, F1, we say to F5. And uh, that was like a 2.5. So um, uh, they can be much worse than that. So, hey, what is a tornado, just as a side note? Well, it's a violent, dangerous, rotating column of air, which is in contact with both the surface of the Earth and a cumulonimbus cloud. The wind speeds are between 40 and 110 miles per hour. Approximately 250 feet across, usually. They can get bigger, by the way. They travel a few miles before dissipating. So this is most uh, tornadoes. The most extreme can attain wind speeds of more than 300 miles per hour, stretch more than a mile across, and stay on the ground for dozens of miles. Hey, there are several types of tornadoes as well. There's the cylindrical cloud tornado, which is actually kind of in the background image back here. There's a rope-like. This is kind of a rope-like one. See, it kind of looks like a rope, kind of twisting like that. And there's water spouts, and this isn't the full uh, picture. A water spout, by the way, is kind of cool. It's a tornado over water. There's actually more water spouts that don't happen in uh, severe weather. They tend to not be very um, intense, but the ones that happen in severe weather, as in supercell type deal, those are the bad ones. Uh, but if, you know, if you're a boat out there in the middle of it, uh, got problems, but it, there are usually not a lot of people live on the water, so it's not usually as big a deal. Hey, how do we measure uh, tornadoes? There's something called the Fujita Tornado Intensity Scale, named after uh, Mr. Fujita, who taught at the University of, uh, I think it's Chicago, somewhere in Chicago, and, um, uh, and he was a famous uh, tornado guy. Um, an F0 is a, considered a weak tornado, um, and they basically uh, categorize it by the um, estimated rotational wind speed. This just says wind speed, but it's because, of course, tornadoes, they travel in a rotating pattern. So uh, it, the higher the wind speed, the stronger the tornado. F1, you can see you get a little higher uh, uh, wind speeds. This is in miles per hour. And when you get to the F5s, um, you know, neighborhood 300 miles per hour, and that's devastating. It'll destroy everything. I mean... If anything comes into contact with it, it's, it's done. Tornadoes are just, I mean, I, maybe some of you had experiences with tornadoes or friends or family. Um, it's, it's pretty devastating. We have uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, they own a farm in Iowa, and they basically lost their house to a tornado. Um, uh, they were lucky to survive. Um, tornado damage, you probably ever can know about this. Of course, it's the strong winds and the strong updrafts that do all the damage. Of course, then that knocks over trees, houses, cars, etc., etc. This is a, an amazing one here. This picture right here is from uh, Greensburg High School in uh, Texas. Kansas, pardon me, Kansas. Um, and this was a E5, actually the E right there, when it uh, stands for the Enhanced Fujita Scale, or Extended. Uh, there's a sort of a new sort of the new version. This is the highest possible rate. It struck the city in May of 07, and uh, you can see that was once a high school. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's done. I don't know if there was like some kind of roof over the top, but um, a nice strong brick building, you think it could survive? Uh, it didn't because it was an F5. And uh, devastation can just be unbelievable. Hey, where do they strike? Um, this is actually just the um, summary of, I think it's F3 to F5. So yeah, this is F3 
to F5s, so not F1s and 2s. Most of the tornadoes that actually occur, though, are these weaker ones, but let's take a look at the, the really bad guys. The really bad ones tend to, uh, you know, you can kind of see kind of a pattern, you know, throughout, like right there. That's where the bad ones, and occasionally you'll get them up in here. So, um, yeah, you can see some very devastating um, tornadoes. There's a, a thing, um, and actually worldwide where you see tornadoes, these are just possibilities of places. You can see tornadoes, basically, the United States is a big section. Europe, to some degree, little parts here, right here. Actually, interesting thing, this is a little town, or not town, a little country called um, Bangladesh, and Bangladesh, sadly, has the most deaths of tornadoes. They have very high population density, and there's not a lot of warning systems. And even though actually the tornadoes are worse in terms of their intensity in the United States, it doesn't tend to happen there as much. Uh, the, the deaths, because we uh, have a better warning system, etc. So, and you can see, of course, Australia, the Philippines get them, South Africa, and Argentina. All right. Um, what time of year do they occur? All right. Um, these regions over here, uh, July, August, September, so kind of your, uh, this is the range. Uh, April, May, June here for kind of the main Midwest section, and January, February, March for down in the southeast. And it's, you know, a, a tornado can happen any time of the year, but this is sort of the general time of year that you find them happening. You don't want to sketch some of these uh, uh, graphics. Um, while we're at this, the thing they call Tornado Alley, where, where you have kind of the worst section of tornadoes. Um, Colorado, where we live, of course, right here-ish, um, we're not in Tornado Alley, but we're getting kind of close to it. But you can see big tornadoes. We, we live in the mountains, you know, in the mountains it's very rare to see a tornado in the mountain, that said. And I've lived in Woodland Park for two years and there's been two tornadoes, but before that, it was ten years before, that's very, very rare to see a tornado in the mountains. Uh, mountains mess everything up. Um, the changing elevation. You need a pretty flat place. And if you uh, know your topography, um, this whole part of the United States is uh, it's pretty flat. <laughs> so um, just to give you another uh, data here, um, just uh, you don't need to copy this down. If you want to print it and put it in your notes, that'd be all right. Um, what number of tornadoes per year? Um, um, uh, this is an average. So Colorado, you can see we've got about 22 every year. Um, Texas gets 139 a year. Wow. You know, um, Puerto Rico doesn't get any, Alaska doesn't get any, um, Hawaii gets one a year total, you know, on average. You can kind of see, you know, obviously, where do you see the big numbers? I'm seeing big numbers, you know, like right in here. And this next graph actually is almost a better one. The average number of per year per 10,000 square miles, because it's kind of like Texas has lots of space, so does it have as much tornadoes? Well, uh, Oklahoma's kind of the winner here. 8.2. Actually, oh no, in Texas or uh, Florida is bigger, 9.4. So I see a couple of big numbers there. So sixes and 5.8s. This is per a certain number of space. If I were to take this, you know, square that big, I don't know how big 10,000 square miles is, but let's say that's what it is. That's how many you see in that particular area. And you can see kind of big numbers, kind of in these ranges here. And that kind of goes with that other map we saw earlier, all right? And uh, everyone always wants to know, oh, what were the bad ones, right? Okay, what were the bad tornadoes? You don't need to copy this down, but March 18th, 1925, they lost uh, 695 people. They died, 2,027 were injured. So this was a huge, sometimes they, they form in these big cloud banks or these, uh, and, and uh, yeah, in Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana, F5, very bad. May 6, 1840, they lost 317 people. Um, probably the more recent ones, um, probably, the, you know, most of them, see, these are pretty old, 1936, 216 people left, another 1936, two days in a row, look at that. Do you see that? That must have been a bad couple of days. My word. One in Mississippi the next day, they hit Georgia. My, my. So you can kind of see the, the issue, of course, of course, is we've gotten better and better at detecting them. Speaking of detecting them, how do we detect tornadoes? The beauty is we have this thing called Doppler radar. And we last learned last time or time before about radar and how it works. And it's just getting better and better all the time. The key, though, is to predict where it might be likely. So what they want to do is to figure out where they actually occur. So let's actually look at a Doppler uh, radar animation to show you what we can see now. Note on this one, just the uh, amazing, in this animation, look at the, at how this is rotating, this cloud right here, it's gonna kind of repeat itself. This is from June 5th of 2009. Look at just the amazing it's a Doppler radar um, that they're picking up of this tornado. This was actually an F5 tornado, one of the biggest ones possible, so it's amazing how uh, 
how just how vivid these images are. The radar uh, is getting so. And this over here on this side is just a similar kind of a deal where we're seeing um, the rotation just uh, with a different kind of a uh, lens, I guess.